Hi everyone and welcome to my Natalia Spike Trap Demon Hunter guide. This is a complete new build that Blizzard has designed for Season 28. In case you haven't seen anything about it, it revolves around Spike Traps. And it's most likely going to end up being the strongest Demon Hunter solo pushing build in the future seasons. But before we dive into all the details, I just want to take a short moment here to talk about some of the comments and feedback that I've received on my videos lately, especially regarding the Natalia set and um, people being extremely unhappy about the fact that this is not the spin to win build that we might have seen on the PTR. I just want to remind you that I am not a developer of this game and I'm also just like one voice of many. So there were many people that had kind of similar opinions to me and even without any input from me or you know any other streamer you might want to blame for this, there would have been pretty much exactly a similar outcome. If you read those patch notes here, it literally says that they wanted to move Natalia away from the Gears of Dreadland's playstyle with a unique identity. So the spin to win was never going to happen. This was just an accident that we saw on the PTR. And lastly, I would like to highlight that here's this God Demon Hunter buff that was not present in the original version of the PTR and the Season 38 patch, but that appeared in the final patch notes. And I was actually a big supporter and proponent of this even though I felt like Gordy Manta was in a really good spot already and was not really in need or even deserved a buff. But here we are. So I felt that because I knew that this whole Natalia strafe spin to win stuff is not going to happen, we could at least push for something like that for all the people that especially have enjoyed the season 27 spin to win playstyles with Impale being very powerful and these kind of things. And Demon Hunter overall is in an extremely good spot in Season 28. There's the God set, there's the UE set, there's the ZDH. There's an even better CDH because of the Natalia set. Already covered that in another video. And Demon Hunter in general is like one of the classes in the game right now. So there's not really much to worry about. And this final patch that we saw from PDR to life, removing the spin to win build, in fact, resulted in a buff to Natalia, so I also just want to highlight that. It is harder to play, but it's effectively buffed as a build in solo pushing potential. In fact, in Season 28, with the Seasonal Theme also assisting this build, it will be quite powerful. We have put it in A tier, which is uh, around the Marauder level, potentially better than Marauder. So this is going to be one of the top builds in the game, probably something like a top 10 or top 15 or something like that. It's going to be quite powerful, at least as long as you play it correctly. So this is why you're here, I guess. And currently, my estimate is that we're going to see the first G150 solo clear. So this build at somewhere around the Paragon level 2000. So quite early in the season, in the first few days, in fact. So with the seasonal theme and the power of the set, you can actually do quite some magic. But enough of that topic now. Let's jump into the setup. Never mind all these like random items I have equipped. That's just my bank shot right now but I will show you some gameplay and the defuel panel in a second. First, I want to go through the set though. So on the two-piece bonus, we have this 100% extra damage for spike traps, which is this ability when enemies are affected by caltrops. So this is like this slow trap that you can place. So whenever enemies approach, those caltrops will automatically uh, spring. And then there's like this slow area of effect and this means that enemies are affected by it. So the idea is that you stack up those things together and you play like a trap demon hunter. So you try to, you know, stack them up on top of each other and then you explode those spike traps. So spike traps are your main ability in this build. So you put them on the ground. You can have up to 10 of them when you have the custom engineering passive and the Dragul coils that gives you the scatter rune. Scatter rune gives you two spike traps every time you place one and this gives you a maximum of 10. And then they explode in a chain reaction, starting from the oldest to the newest trap. But in order to actually make them explode, you have to use another ability, usually a hated spender. So in this case, I can tap strafe and you're going to see that these traps will explode one by one. Yeah, one, two, pop, 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 pop. And they all explode in this chain reaction. This is actually quite important because of the six piece bonus. So the six piece bonus, similar to other sets, has this insane 10,000% extra damage. And you have this consecutive explosion chain effect. And this is exactly what you just saw. So the latest trap is the last one in the line to explode. You can have a chain reaction of up to 10 explosions and they each deal 25% extra damage more than the previous, up to a 225% extra damage bonus. And this raises 
the average damage of the traps by 112%. So this means that the general playstyle revolves around setting up these cow drops fields for the 2 beast bonus for the 100% extra damage and then ha having those chain reactions of exactly 10 spike traps exploding and then you repeat. So you always put 5 traps, explode, 5 traps, explode and again and again. So this is how you deal damage with this build after you have put down the cow drops on top of the enemies. And there is one extra effect that helps you with that, which is the 4-piece bonus. So this allows you to pull in enemies. I've already shown this in my other video, talking about the new Natalia pull support Demon Hunter, which is actually fairly effective. Because this pull effect can actually pixel stack enemies in those caltrops. So you put them on the ground and then you go to an enemy, or like you, you put spike traps under an enemy, like uh, Kadala here, and then you explode and these blasts will actually throw those monsters into the center of the caltrop here. It actually has a really large radius. Uh, it seems to be pretty much exactly as far as you can place those spike traps, which is yeah, almost to the edge of the screen there. So you can pull enemies from very far away into your caltrops. I'm going to show this in action. So when you have these zombies here, I put the caltrops, I put the spike traps, and now I right click for a strafe and we pull them all in like this, in this pixel pull here. And you see they are like tightly stacked up and this is insane for area damage. So this is part of the reason why this new support demand variant is going to be so good, I believe. And also how you can produce those pulls and those insane area damage uh, results with this set and how we actually push to a high tier with this. And you can really like toy with your enemies. So it's actually pretty cool. You can uh, pull them in here whenever you want and you can pull them out again into a different spot. And obviously the crowd control reduction rules apply. So if you knock enemies around all the time, you will not be able to do this constantly because they have to like refresh their crowd control resistance over time. But you can definitely pull them around a few times and have really nicely stacked monster packs. Now the thing is that when a cow top is already activated like this, so this cow top is sprung, this doesn't actually pull enemies anymore. So for this you have to set up a new cow top. So you see this here, these zombies are just like always in this area and whenever they place a new trap, they will immediately uh, trigger it. But there is this tiny window where I can actually pull enemies together. So I'm going to try to do this here. We put the spike traps and then we press cow traps plus strafe together like this. And you see, I can still pull them in because there's like this half second window or so where the pull works before the cow traps activate. So you can try this again. We put the spike traps here and then we do cow traps and strafe and they get pulled again. So even when enemies are nearby, you can use the pulling effect. But on the other hand, when enemies are in your cow drops, you can just start doing DPS and you don't have to worry about pressing this cow drop anymore unless you want to move them again to another place. So the way that you generally play this build, especially in a solo push, is that you try to stack up these enemies first. So you try to run around, you see like this pull is here and there's like a few more zombies there. So we try to pull them together by putting a few of these spike traps and we get them all in like this. And you see here now that I'm nicely and tightly stacked. And then you start doing this combo of five times spike traps that spawns up to 10 for the chain reaction and explode and repeat like this. So the DPS phase is actually fairly straightforward. You just need to kind of get a feel for the, in the muscle memory maybe for how long it takes to do five casts because you don't want to stop too early. You don't want to like overdo it. You want to have exactly five casts of these spike traps for the perfect chain reaction. And you see here that they actually start despawning when you do too many. So they just disappear there. One thing that's important to keep in mind for this pulling effect for the cow drops is that if you place too many spike traps at once, the later ones will actually not pull in enemies. I'm going to show this in action here. So you're going to do this and this and this and here. So you have like a chain reaction now. And now I'm going to do cow drop and pull. And you see that the first few explosions, they actually pull in enemies, but the later ones do not. And this is also because the cow drop has already been sprung and now it cannot pull enemies anymore. So you gotta be a bit careful of that. And you have to uh, essentially in the pulling phase only do like one or maybe two casts of spike traps and explode and repeat. So there's also quite a little bit of practice to get used to, but once you understand the timing with the cow traps plus the spike trap explosion, you always want to detonate the spike trap exactly the moment that you put the cow trap to pull in enemies. And again, afterwards you have this DPS phase and you can just blast with those five to one combos. 
So again, for example, here, if we try to pull these together, we do a spike trap and then we do a caltrop strafe. We do a spike trap, caltrop strafe together, spike trap, caltrop strafe. And this is how you create those large pulls to deal damage in the end. There are some other useful effects on the set here. So for example, the two piece also gives you basically infinite discipline. So you get two discipline per spike trap explosion. So every time you do those 10 spike traps here and the combo, which takes something like around two seconds or so in the TPS phase, you get 20 discipline. So you can spam shadow power, you can spam smoke screen, you can spam cow drops, anything you want, and you never run out of discipline. So this is actually really crazy. And then there's also the 75% damage reduction on the four piece bonus. It has like this little like brawler icon here, this like strong arm uh, muscle icon. So this is the spike drop damage reduction. So in case you're wondering what that is, you just get it from putting spike drops on the ground. And then whenever you have 10 spike drops on the ground and you place one, you get this 10 second timer for the damage reduction. So you can just walk around for quite a while and not have to worry about it. So now that you understand the basics of how caltrops and spike traps interact with the set, let's get into the sound of footage here. So this is uh, GR142 that I was doing on non-season here with my uh, Demon Hunter. And uh, I also have the Defeat Planner here. I have also written the Maxwell Guide. So if you want to go check that out, I have um, fully updated it after the original release because um, there were some of these undocumented changes that changed the setup significantly. And uh, it's like in, uh, in a good shape now, I guess, and ready for season 28, including the seasonal version. So I'm going to talk you through this. So in addition to the Natalia set, we have a few other really important spike trap items that you're going to have in all variants of this build effectively. So that's the Demon's Demise, gives you 200% extra damage, same as Tragul's Coils, and the Chain on Bolter. All of these have a spicy damage bonus and some extra effects. You have already seen the Tragul Coils, so this Bracer is indispensable. It gives you the Scatter Rune, which gives you two spike drops at once, and you also put them down faster. So you get double the attack speed, so to say, and uh, this just makes this cycle of 5 to 1 with the spike traps and the explosions a lot more smooth. Then you have the Chain on Bolter. The extra effect here is actually a negative. It taunts enemies towards the spike traps, which is actually something you don't want because you usually want to pull them around. So while this does help a little bit to protect you from incoming attacks, it uh, crowd controls enemies and then you can't pull them as much. But there's nothing you can do about it. And generally the pull still works all right. Just something to keep in mind. And lastly, we have the Demon's Demise here. So this gives you an extra spike to explosion after they were hit. So this explosion is just like another um, like instance of damage, so to say, and deals exactly the same damage as this spike drop originally. So there is like this kind of like delay. First, you have those 10 spike drops going off in a chain reaction, and then you have those 10 Demon's Demise explosions going off in a chain reaction again. So it kind of like deals damage in many small hits over time as you do your chain reactions. Here we have the Ring of Royal Granger. This one is included because we combined the Natalia set with the Orgle set and Crimson or Guardian set. So depending on the exact setup, uh, at least the Orgle is included and then one of the other two as well, because you get a bunch of extra power. The Natalia set doesn't have a shoulder. You can't use Mantle of Channeling really effectively. So there's not anything in the shoulder slot. So this is yeah, basically like a almost free include here with the Orgle set. And we don't even have a generator, for example, for Wraps of Clarity. And then on the higher end, at least, once you have a bit of Paragons, Captain Crimson is really useful for the extra cooldown, the resource cost, and the damage and damage reduction. On the lower end of Paragons, you can also do this setup here, just replacing the Crimson with the Guardian set and moving around the Orgots pieces. So this is otherwise exactly the same stuff. And we have a bunch of smaller choices and some moving parts in the build. So here's a Dawn, for example. This ensures that you can have permanent mentions uptime, which makes the build uh, much easier to play. So this is like kind of like a standard version that I recommend for beginners with this build because it's not the tankiest and you gotta be a bit careful when you don't have vengeance up. So Dawn can be included here to make this easier to play, but this is not the strongest variant. The strongest variant actually runs the Natalia weapon instead and doesn't have permanent vengeance. So vengeance is actually a decent buff, but it's not good enough to make this Dawn really valuable on the high end of pushing. So while the setup of the Dawn has an Atari's Reflection Ring to get this six-piece bonus, you can drop it when you have the weapon equipped and you can get the Endless Vork set in here. 
And this gives you another pretty strong damage buff that outweighs what you gain from a little bit more Vengeance uptime. But again, this is something that is more for the high end of pushing and when you're already experienced with the build and have gathered really good items and maybe some paragons. Here's the convention of elements. This is not really a necessary item. So if for some reason you have a lot of trouble staying alive with this build, which is not too unlikely when it's like completely new to you and you're like low paragon in the season and stuff like that, you can definitely put in something like an elusive ring. 60% damage reduction is pretty juicy and you trigger it all the time. So this is an option. Another option is here we have the smooth screen. As I mentioned, you can spend that all the time. You can see this here in the footage as well. There is a rune that instead of the displacement, you get healing vapors, which heals you 15% of your life every time you use it. So that is another option to stay alive a bit better. For the skills, you saw most of them already or talked about them, but let's get into the details here. We have the Spike Trap Echoing Blast. So this is usually the rune of choice. It has the highest damage output. On the PTR, we did play Lightning, but that is dead now. There were several pretty heavy nerfs to that rune, which makes it unusable if you want to do a serious setup of this build. So Echoing Blast is the rune, or you can also play the Fire version. So some people try that with the custom trigger. The main difference here is that the custom trigger rune triggers on a hater generator instead of a spender. So you can use any of the generators like Evasive Fire, Hardened, for example, to get a bit of extra toughness and trigger those spike traps without spending hatred. So as you can see, my hatred is generally rather low here in the setup. This is on non-season, keep in mind that. Uh, I don't have the vigor effect, for example, from the season 28 theme, but you can definitely run out of hatred quite easily if you're not careful. The downside is that at least on a non-seasonal build, you have to drop strafe and strafe is what enables you to walk through enemies on this build. There is no vault in this build and without the season 28 theme, you cannot just walk through enemies. Now, in Season 28, this is not a problem, but at least on non-season and in the future, this will be. And you need to include a vault if you want to run this build with the custom trigger rune and a hater generator. And this is also a bit more squishy than this variant here. So realistically, you have to drop the shadow power or the smoke screen, but either of those, you don't really want to drop because, as I mentioned, this build is not the tankiest and both these things help you tremendously to stay alive. So playing around the strafe is usually to go. But in Season 28, when you unlock the passability that allows you to walk through enemies, strafe is not required and this whole thing becomes a bit uh, more simple. And you also get the extra resources from the Vigor passive in Season 28. So you don't have to worry that much about the hatred there. And you can actually open up a few other choices for spenders. So for example, the one that I recommend is Elemental Arrow Nether Tentacles. This one gives you 0.4% of your maximum life as healing for every enemy you hit. And in decently large poles, you can easily heal for like, you know, five to 10% of your life, maybe more even, whenever you trigger your traps, which is just some nice extra healing. And it costs only 10 hatred. There's also the option to actually run multi-shot. So there is the cold rune that uh, usually you only use as a support demon hunter. It gives you 8% extra crit chance. And for example, in season 28, when you push with the empowered shrines, this is an option actually. So when you have Empowered Shrine, you have enough resources to actually even run this skill and you get extra 8% crit, which is gonna be quite nice. But in the end, it's a kind of minor thing which spender you exactly choose or if you use uh, even the custom trigger rune, the fire rune that triggers on a generator. It doesn't really impact the overall performance all that much. So to finish with the skills here, we have the Shadow Bar Gloom, just nice damage reduction. In speedruns, this is not needed, so you go Shadow Power, Shadow Glide for 30% extra speed. And we have the Caltrops Bait the Trap. So this is like the only uh, Caltrops rune that really does anything. And it's actually a pretty significant DPS buff as well. So you kind of want to stand in those Caltrops as you put them down and as you pull enemies together as well, so that you get this uh, extra buff here. Here's also a Foreman Trash Killer variant. So I just want to highlight that real quick. And you can see this here right now. This is a GR150 that we have done on the live server. Uh, on the patch night when this came out. So this was still not really optimized or anything like that. And neither was my gear here. And uh, this 150 was actually relatively easy, at least with like our relatively high Paragon and a bit of like optimized group play in the three man scenario. And you can do something similar to this with probably less than 2000 Paragons in season 28. So the season 28 theme is pretty strong and helps you out a lot here. But in the end, this is like a much easier setup to play. You essentially have the support do everything for you, including the support Demon Hunter, 
putting down the caltrops in the middle of the pool so you don't have to worry about them. In fact, you can actually run completely without the caltrops because they still activate the damage bonus from the two-piece Natalia for the DPS Demon Hunter. So the Sobat Demon Hunter can do all the hard work and you just completely focus on nuking. And then you have, for example, a support barbarian making those pulls for you with the ground stomp for area damage. And it actually turns out to be a pretty decent trash killer. So this is not exactly a match for the likes of Nova and Meteor, but at least in a world where those builds might get nerfed in Season 29 at least, um, yeah, Taya is actually kind of up there as a pretty decent build, I imagine. So this is definitely something you can do 150s comfortably with. Lastly, I want to talk about speed farming a bit. So I imagine most people actually speed farm with UE Multishot or God Demon Hunter, which are slightly better. But Natalia also turns out to be relatively decent for this purpose. So you see here, this was recorded with 2000 Paragon spent only. GR 112s were absolutely no problem on non-season. So in season 28, this would probably be yeah, somewhere around like 118s, 119s or something like that uh, at my gear level at 2k Paragon, which would be slightly higher than something like God and Multishot, but it's a bit slower. So you aim for something like three minute runs, you don't really do most of this like pulling around shenanigans of the Caltrops. Instead, you mostly just hunt down those big packs and the elite packs and you blast them down and you find them. So this is the setup here. It is very similar to the solo push variant, just with some extra speed. As I mentioned, the shadow power, you can put in the tactical advantage. And then we have the Squirt's Necklace with Molten Wildebeest. You can just have this gem to protect the Squirt's Necklace with the shield and you're good to go. Finally, I want to talk about the T16 variant here real quick. This is not really like a top tier T16 build, but there will be seasons where you don't start with a God Demon Hunter, for example, and then you have to make something work. So I just put this in here for that reason. So I would just suggest to go with Danetas, and this makes your vault into a hated spender that can actually detonate those spike traps. So you just vault around, try to find packs, put a spike trap, blow them up, and keep moving on. So this is just like. Yeah, something relatively okay, but I would not recommend this over Multishot or God Demon Hunter. And that also concludes the guide here. Again, keep in mind that this is a very fresh build, so this just came out literally two days ago, and all the theory crafting, all the testing has been done in yeah, very little time. So there is likely going to be some updates to this, some new tricks that we discover over time that makes this a bit better and better. And eventually, as I mentioned, this is uh, probably noticeably beating Marauder. At the very least, it's going to be very close between them. And if you're playing Demon Hunter, I would definitely suggest try it out. Try to get used to the playstyle. It is something very unique, something that I find actually relatively fun, especially with all this level of control that you have over enemies with the pulling and these kind of things. Makes it a pretty cool setup, in my opinion. And with this, I conclude this guide here. Let me know if there's any open questions or some stuff that I didn't go into enough detail with. I try to give a really good overview of how the setup works in general and then also show some of the gameplay that I have um, yeah, done so far. Obviously, I'm going to be testing this build more when Season 28 is actually live and we have more time to gear it up and try and experiment. But for now, that's all we got. I hope you enjoyed this video here and I'll see you guys next time.